Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, we're some kind of species as humans here. Because, why you would ask? And, and why is because there's so much opportunity, there's so many gifts, there's so much love, so much freedom, so much connection between us all and somehow we go on and on and to some extent almost everyone here misses some part of it. And really we know, we know that we're all connected, we know that we're all brothers and sisters, we know that we're all surrounded by love, made of love, and are here to recognize that and are here to manifest that and are here to joyously and lovingly collaborate and create and make, return us to the Garden of Eden, return this planet to a place where unconditional love is the motivating force, is the, what we talk about on bridging so often is that, that we become as, as beings on this planet, love in motion, that we inherently, because that is our nature, move in love, move in oneness, move in the experience of the infinite, move in the experience of the inclusion, move, move in the experience of our universal connection, move in joy. And now is the opportunity for that over and over and over and over again. So much energy is being focused within and without on this planet to make that, in essence, quantum shift, that quantum leap. We can, if we're just a little open, start to feel it. If we haven't felt it yet, we can. We can know it, and we can know it in its fullness and its glory. That is the truth, and that is the potential of this time. And whatever reasons we give to ourselves or, or others why this is not the right thing, not the possible thing, not the reasonable thing, not the smart thing, forget it. 
just forget it because it's lunacy and we know it in our hearts that we are here to come together as brothers and sisters and come to a Garden of Eden and make this place a place of love and devotion and collaboration and creativity. So join with us. Join with us here at Bridging. That's why we come together. That's why we do these shows. That's why so many people make so much effort to make these shows and this energy and this vibration available to everyone on this planet, in a sense, with the new paradigms of, of the way energy and even on, on a gross level, through the internet, through the YouTube, through the Google's videos of the world, through all the video channels, through all the ways that information and energy and vibration can go out, that every one of these shows with all these hundreds of guests whose sole intention was to spread the vibration of love, whose every intention was to be dedicated to the oneness, can reach literally into almost every home on this planet or, or to the libraries in the the countries that don't have it in every home, to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, to the museums, somewhere in a country, in most countries, in most cities, this energy of this show, of all the bridging shows, are available. And what a, what a grace, what a gift. And that's true for bridging, that we know. But it's also true if you go on and you look for all the extraordinary spiritual teachers and healers, so many of their their talks, their workshops, their vibrations are available to everyone. And so if we can just seek it out, if we can just be open to it, the opportunity is there for that experience, that reality, to once again be more real in our lives, to, to start to explode, to, to bring us into that passionate recognition, to let us catch fire to the unconditional love that we are. And tonight's guest is on fire. She's on fire with the unconditional love of the divine, of the creator, of the goddess, of, of the father, of the one. And she has devoted her life to sharing that and spreading that. And she's been a guest on Bridging before. Vivian Nantel, whose spiritual name is Devi, is a spiritual guide. She's an animal advocate. She's a writer. She's a poet. One of the most extraordinary vision, visionary artists you can imagine. I mean, if you will see two or three or four pieces of, of Vivi's tonight that are so beautiful and so powerful and so connected to that love, so connected to that recognition of the oneness, that desire for the oneness, that hunger for the oneness, that it's just, it's magical. She has just finished a three-part series on love and oneness and the goddess energy in Yoga Monthly, the last three issues of Yoga Monthly, and just her life is dedicated to that. So you're going to see all this art by Vivi. And the first piece you're going to see, which you'll see when Vivi gets on the set, was a piece done for the uh, Bridging International Healing Art Project that came as a dream, came as a vision about two or three years ago, to reach out to the world and say, Please, let's as a healing, let's as an acupuncture, all of us, all of us create and manifest and, and vibrate and however we can create to allow a piece to come through us based on the theme bridging heaven and earth. And we have received pieces from literally all over the planet that are so powerful. There are no time limits, there's no format size, there's no age limit, there's no skill level. Anybody who's out there who feels moved, who feels that they would be enlivened to be part of this healing, this acupuncture, please join us. The project is infinite, the project is inclusive, and the project is ongoing. And if you want to see some of the pieces that have come in from all over the world, heaventoearthart.com, heaven, T-O, earth, A-R-T.com. You'll probably see the, the graphics of it on the screen. And we also have two wonderful videos tonight. We've received, there's a trailer for a new movie. It's never been out. It's, I don't even think it's on the internet. It's Ancient Code from two dear friends of ours who put it together. One was a former guest on the show, Philip Gardner. And then we have another beautiful video about uh, animal advocates and, and the best way to do that and how 
this can be used to, to raise our consciousness from alley cat allies and other friends bridging. So there's an opportunity really for a lot of blessings to show, a lot of opportunity, a lot of openness to be opened and reopened and reopened and grown and just beauty to come in. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first video and then uh, Vivi Devi will be with us and it'll just be, you know, a, a lucky opportunity for us all to be together. So join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So the f first video we're going to show tonight is a trailer for a new movie. As I said, it hasn't come out yet. It's called The Ancient Code. We want to thank former guest Philip Gardner and Warren Croyle of Reality Films for making this available to us. Philip has also gotten us on in England, all over Europe. He's trying to get us on. He lives in England. He's trying to get us on in um, Sweden and Serbia now, and he's really making every effort to allow Bridging's energy and shows to be shown all over the world, and he's really a great friend of Bridging, and Warren is as well. So it's a beautiful video. It's going to be a beautiful film. Ancient Code. Enjoy. Our world, all the other worlds, all the planets, all the universes, parallel universes, whatever there may be, every blade of grass, every um, animal is interconnected in some way, shape or form. Some say the end of mankind is near. Some say that economic and financial turmoil is part of the process, along with global warming, warfare, and the spread of mass psychosis. When place you feel at home and you think you'll be better off alone. children are prescribed drugs to keep them calm the climate is changing all around us while celebrities become our gods and materialism the new mantra we live in an era where we're obsessed by celebrity. We live in an era where everyone wants a route out of their ordinary lives and people want a quick fix these days. I mean the idea the idea of, of learning a trade from your father or doing a five year apprenticeship has gone out of the window. People now want to go on Big Brother and become a celebrity overnight. People want to be a wag. Is there a reason behind this modern day madness? Are our material lives making us truly content? If I want to know what the truth is, I have to live truthfully. Mm. And as long as I live as truthful to myself and to others, then I'm like in the vibration of truth. Therefore, it will resonate with me or not. But there is a ratio to it all, a rhyme and reason behind everything that we do and everything that affects us. Did this really happen by accident? Did this whole universe and us living on this planet in this fragile atmosphere in this one place in, in the universe? It is beyond thought, it is beyond words, but there is a purpose to it. Once people start connecting with what they think and what they believe, once they start taking the more innocent point of view that their ancestors took, I think there's still hope for the survival of this human race. Because if they don't, we will poison ourselves off this planet eventually, I think. Like mad magicians seeking to rule the world, men of renown have fleetingly seen the epic nature of the ancient code in its alluring essence. But all too often, they fall into an abyss of their own making, choosing the wrong side of the code. But today, we too have missed the point in our everyday complacency. We choose to exist in a waking sleep. We spend time naming things and separating them, 
classifying endless parts and pieces without remembering the whole, the one from which all things It needs no hatred nor warfare. It needs no drugs. It simply is. For you are the key to the code. Once you've found that point of connection in yourself where you are part of nature, part of the world around you and it is part of you, then no secret, no quantum physics, quantum spirituality can get anywhere near that point of unique connection because you've found yourself and you've found your own God within yourself. Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was The Ancient Code, a beautiful new movie that's going to be coming out, so just watch for it. Uh, it was given to us by the people at Reality Films, Phil Gardner and Warren Croyle, so thanks for letting us have that. So we're on the set with Vivi, but also I wanted to tell you about this incredible piece that Vivi did two or three years ago for the art project. It's called Bridging Heaven and Earth Blossom. It's uh, mixed media and it is one powerful <laughs> extraordinary piece as you could well see now so this is one inspirational artist so welcome Vivi it's great to have you back Debbie Vivi I'm Hi. so I'm so happy to be back it's actually quite a blessing and an honor to be back even more special now than it was five years ago when I was here how do you mean yeah. that well uh, since we saw each other, you know, I have gone through a major journey. <laughs> I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was at stage 3. And so it was a very powerful spiritual ascension. And, and I went through uh, six months of intense chemotherapy and two surgery and radiation. And so, like I said, it's very special to be here today. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. So yeah. why don't you talk a little yeah. bit about the process and just what you as a human being went through through the whole thing and the ascension things and just things that really have brought you to this place where you're obviously glowing. Mm -hmm. Well, the praise goes to the Divine Mother. <laughs> you looked uh, up at the lights and it's good all <laughs> where, where is the Divine Mother? It's within us right, and all of us, within right. every particle right. of this universe. But I feel so much... Um, uh, I don't have the words, just manifesting through me. Uh, well, when I was diagnosed, it was not really a surprise. I had a premonition, and it was something I felt like I was going through um, spiritually. And so it was not a surprise at all. And um, it was a very powerful experience, even though I knew intuitively what I was going to go through. And I chose to go through chemotherapy. I could have taken another route to do some treatments. But intuitively, and I had prayed also, as you know, you know how much I love animals, and my heart is so much with the animals, and I always talk about having compassion for all Satan beings. And I'm very involved in uh, helping the animal kingdom. Um, a part of me felt like when I was in India way back a few years before, I was given a boom by my spiritual master, His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. And in my heart, I remember we were there at the Silver Jubilee and there were one million people. We were all meditating together and there were angels all over the place. And I, Sri Sri said, Gurudev said, there were a lot of... Uh, 
of angels. And I pray, and I, I said, if I could take on the karma of the animal kingdom or any way I could do to help the incredible cruelty, I would take it on. And I think I said that unconsciously. And I made it very clear, though, and I didn't realize, actually, when I was in India, I was diagnosed within the same year with, with cancer, probably within a year, that's when I was diagnosed. But, so going through the journey was, um, first of all, I think what I would like to really emphasize for me was there was a major surrendering when my husband, I remember in the very beginning, first of all, they thought I was going to uh, lose my breast because the, the tumor was very big. It was like about one inch, but they did not know it was much bigger than that. In reality, it was three inches. We find that out later. And it was already uh, going into my lymph nodes, so it was already had met met metastasized. And so my husband left for the weekend. I was left alone and I, I remember, I will never forget, I looked at myself in the mirror, I was getting ready for bed, and it was like, like a thunder hit me, a lightning, and I just lost it emotionally. It was like, I cannot describe it, there's no words. And I, it was like such a pool of duality, it was like the darkness of the soul, and I, I collapsed. Literally, I mean, I have done a lot of mourning and grieving over, you know, a period of lifetime. I have cleansed so many things and all baggage are gone. It's been so long, even from past life. But this was something very powerful. And I lost it and I collapsed on the floor and I grieve and mourn and yell and scream. And I said, Divine Mother, I said, why have you forsaken me? I felt like Jesus Christ on the cross. And... Something happened in that moment, in that surrendering, it was so powerful. It was like a portal where you open a door in the unknown where the words cannot describe. And I met the goddess, my true divinity. And within that light, it was like in the bright light, there was a dance, a vals. And it was like I got caught into the fire of Agni, you know, Agni in Sanskrit means the fire. It burned me, it burned whatever there was there. I, mean, I don't know if it was ego or what, because I was so terrified of chemotherapy. As you know, most people know chemotherapy is like, I mean, it could literally kill you. Um, and losing my hair, I used to have blonde hair. And, you know, I have to say, you know, all women, we're very we tend to be a little self-conscious. And I think in our culture, it's so ingrained about having hair and all that. So I was terrified about losing my hair, my eyebrow. I ended up losing my hair, my eyebrow, my lashes, my nails, even losing some skin underneath my, my, my feet. But I want to go back to that moment. It was really like a surrendering, like, like, I went into full bliss after that. It was so very beautiful, and I never experienced such a, a bliss and, and peace. I remember that night, and thank God I was alone, because I think being alone, it allowed me to have this time. I lay down in bed, and I felt like a little baby there, and I was just so blissful, and it was just magnificent. You know, like I said, no word can describe the bliss it was. I didn't feel like I had a body anymore. I was like experiencing everyone. I was in, within everyone, the animals and everything. There's only one being and, and there was no self. There was not such a self. Devi did not exist anymore. Yeah. And then when I had the first chemo, I had a severe adverse reaction. When we came home, um, it caught me by surprise because I was doing very well as the first chemo happened. And we came home and I started having, it was very scary. I was, I remember I walked through the kitchen and there was a mirror there and I just caught a glimpse of myself and I was feeling it. I looked dead. I was white and blue and I started feeling like fainting 
I was actually literally fainting, going unconscious. I felt like my organs were being pulled out, my, my skull opened like a coconut and my brain was sticking out. I was feeling like vomiting all my organs. And I lay down on, on the couch and I started feeling excruciating pain. I felt like I was being poisoned. Big knife, like dozens of big knives going into my stomach and pulling my, my organs. And, <laughs> and my, my reproductive organs. I'm sorry, it's just, it's fine. It's okay. it was very powerful because it was during the Holy Week, and it was at the time of, you know, Easter. We were close to Easter, and I felt like I was dying, and I, I called upon Christ. I said, Christ, I said, come, I need you. And I said, I can't. I was, it was acute pain, and I, I could not even cry. I was agonizing. It was very scary, and my call called the emergency, and and he, he, he called the doctor and he, they said, you know, if she doesn't feel better in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, take her to the emergency. He said she's having a serious adverse reaction. And I'm crying of joy, by the way. <laughs> it's not of pain. It's, it's bliss and, and love and devotion. Because, and in that instant, I felt Christ holding my hand. And I said to him, I said, oh, Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that not in a religious sense, on a spiritual level, because I think of Jesus Christ as one of the most beautiful ascended master, and um, not on a so-called religious sense. You know, it's the Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, you know, Mohammed consciousness is the same consciousness. And um, it's just this, that manifestation of that consciousness. And, and in that moment, I saw Christ, and I was feeling the pain that he felt when he was on the cross. Somehow, I was seeing him in that moment on that cross, and how could we have done that? And I was feeling that compassion for him in that moment, and I saw Jesus I said, my pain is nothing compared to what you went through when you were on the cross. But I said, please, take that pain away from me. In that instant, the pain went away. And it was amazing. And I just lay there, and I got better, and my color started coming back. And Michael, he was very scared. He was putting some compress on me. And I ended up laying on the couch for eight hours. I could not move at all. It was very scary. You know, it's hard to talk about that because people, it's hard for people to relate to this. Um, they have no idea, and everyone is different on chemotherapy, but for me, it was, it was that drastic. I, so I said, okay, I need some spiritual guidance. I, and the spiritual guidance came to go into silence for 10 days and go uh, meditate for five hours every day. I had my hair shaved. And uh, it, it was a, quite an experience shaving my head. Because I don't know if you know in the yogic tradition and also in Buddha tradition, uh, there's such a thing as far as called a mundu. A mundu is when you shave your head and you offer it to the divine, whatever form of divinity you worship, or it could be all of them. Um, you offer it, I offer it to the Divine Mother, to all the Ascended Master, and I put it in our sanctuary. We have a Buddha, and it has, um, it has a leaf with, uh, he's sitting there with a beautiful lotus leaf, and I offer it, and I put it there. I did a special puja, a special worshiping, and um, what else that happened? Then I went, what was interesting is within the standard I was in silence, I, was the, I had the great honor to be invited to go to the highest teaching of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, because I was going to write for him. I was called upon Yoga Magazine. By the way, it, when you were mentioning Yoga Matri, it's called Yoga Magazine. It's an international magazine. It's the leading magazine on yoga. Very beautiful, editorial, very profound. So I went for the teaching. Not because I wrote for them, I'm saying, no, I <laughs> because I see that little <laughs> smile in your face. Uh, no, it's really a beautiful magazine. It oh, has a lot of timeless wisdom and knowledge. So, and then um, I was, oh, I was just coming out of silence when I went to see His Holiness. I was in His presence, and I had the pleasure to uh, be 
close to him and meet him briefly, and he has one of my piece artwork. Actually, one of those pieces we're going to show earlier in the broken glasses with a Buddha on it. So I've been, throughout this experience of going into silence, and um, it was very powerful, just going there and losing myself. But I'm sure you have some question to ask. You're doing good. fine. I, don't, good I don't think people are really interested in what you have to say. No, continue with the story. Continue okay. with the, you know, the the ascension, the enlightenment. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Yeah, very important. Um, so going back to the chemotherapy, because I it was a decision. My doctor wasn't sure if I was be I would be able to pursue the treatment, and. Spiritually, I felt like the reason why I was taking that route was I needed to experience that because it was part of my spiritual assumption. And it was very clear that was an initiation, this whole process I was going through. But also, again, I don't know how can we know, karmically to give the merits for the animal kingdom. I was, some voice was telling me this was important, the suffering that I was going through. And so chemo was not easy for me, but the only way I was able to do it, okay, the divine guidance came more, and it was very clear was to go back. And it was being told to me to chant a mantra of protection of Baba Jigarakshanath. You know, I think a lot of you know Mahavata Baba Jigarakshanath. He was the great Baba Ji that Yogananda talks in the biography of a yogi. And um, I have that special connection with him that I think all of us, we can have that, and many of us, we do. And I called upon him, and I called upon the Ascended Master, and that's was, I think that's what was so, mo so beautiful about my journey with this, because they were with me all the time, and I would do meditation and visualization, and I went to places where, I don't know where, but the known, to different realm of reality. It was, I was flying, I was elevated, elevated in what I went through. Even though a part of my body temple was in pain, but I was capable of transcending this pain and feeling the energy around me. It was amazing because everywhere I walk, people were in tune with this energy. They would come to me, and Michael is a witness of that because he, um, my husband Michael, he had seen that when we were in Hawaii. I mean, people from far away, they would come to me. This woman in particular that I recall, she asked me, you know, where are you coming from? You know, she said, I feel the master around you, your energy. She thought I had a mundu. And actually, a mundu is being told that when you shave your head like that, you remove 108 years of bad karma or karma. I don't know. It's but a lot of master have been talking about that. So for me, the shaving of my head was offered to the Divine Mother, to the master. And so that woman, among so many, they said, you're like a magnet of light. When you come, we can feel the, the energy. So you're not walking alone. I mean, you can feel the master there with you. Yeah. And so I went back to the chemo room and I invoked the presence of all the masters and the angel and the bodhisattva. And even there, all the doctors and the nurses could feel it. And I would close my eyes and it would chant, and when you do this mantra, you actually, you could do it also on yourself. You're protecting yourself. You're creating a magnetic light of resonance. And I think to this experience, that I think of it was, I was resonating so high in vibration, and I was calling so much upon the Ascended Master that they were with me. And that's why people were feeling it so much. And I felt so free. This is what was the most amazing, I still do. But free, like, and I had to face, for some reason, you know, you never know. You could die from cancer. Some people do, even you though die from life almost every day. Yeah, I said so you could die just from. <laughs> I think it's the, you know, the plane, yeah, you uh, never know when it's going uh, to be your, la your yeah. last breath. And it was maybe like facing. I think in that surrendering was a surrendering also of this body temple. 
you know, it was very profound on the sense because we're not really conscious. Most people have a fear of that. We're so attached to this body temple, thinking we are the body, but we're not the body. We're not all those identity that we attach to. My name, my legal name, Vivian Nantel, being an artist, being a spiritual uh, guide or a teacher, or it doesn't matter. We're none of those things. And I think that was that letting go of that. It was so very beautiful. Takes a big burden off. Yeah, tremendously. <laughs> really? And I mean, you know, just letting go and let's say, Divine Mother. Right. It's, it, there's no word to describe that, what happened. It, as it's an experience, it's experiential. And I think there's nothing like a life process of going through what I went through, uh, feeling the pain I felt. I think I felt so much pain also for what's happening on the planet, how throughout the centuries we have been human, uh, homo sapien, we have been destroying this planet, how Mother Earth has been suffering, and global warning is a perfect example of the law of karma, you know, cause and effect, the collective consciousness, what we have done, and how the, the, the kingdom of the animals also are suffering, and I feel, I, I was feeling yeah, that pain. Why don't pain. you, we'll show the second video, why don't you talk okay. a little bit about uh, that video, because I know you like that one. The, the Alley Cat Allies video? Absolutely, I would love to talk about that. That would be wonderful. Okay, so maybe okay. what we'll do is show that one now. This is a, a, a cat advocate uh, piece from Alley Cat Allies. It's really beautiful, it's short, so just settle in, pay attention. Then when we come back, we'll talk about it because as an animal advocate, I mean, Vivi really is, is passionate and knowledgeable and can really be you know, a valuable asset for everybody who wants to really surrender in that way. So, and we'll see another couple of pieces of, of Vivi's art, which is extraordinary. So, Alley Cat Allies, uh, enjoy. Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. Actually, uh, uh, Devi will talk about it in a little while, but we want to talk about this art of Devi's that's in between us now. Why don't you talk to people about, tell people a little about these just magnificent manifestations. But they came from uh, the manifestation of the Divine Mother. And I made like maybe a dozen of those. They're broken media, broken, uh, broken glasses and with mixed media, excuse me. And there were production of uh, Gicli prints of some of my uh, original painting. And you see, in my art, is told back to yoga, I used to spiritual devotion. Union. 
Yeah, it's union with the divine. So I think that's why people are so drawn to my work because it's healing, it's power, it's empowering. It, help, it helps to open different chakra, the heart chakra, and it represents the divine feminine energy. And that's what I want to talk about right now, uh, the divine energy. And you can see it, it permeates all my artwork. And it's a very unusual uh, texture, you know, it's very, it's very unique. I made like maybe a dozens of those. I made some big ones too, but I don't make them anymore because they, they're very time consuming and uh, it, there are a lot of layers and broken the glasses. I was telling earlier to uh, someone, I said, I was breaking glasses. This is like the anger of Shiva, like breaking the glasses. It was, it was quite something making those. And it's pure spiritual practice, Shakti at manifestation in an art form. That's all what I could say. That's beautiful. And it represents the energy of the goddess. Right. And why don't you talk about how that fits in with your whole feeling about animal advocacy and the yes. Alley Cat Allies? Video? Yeah. Before we talk about that, there was an important thing I didn't mention in the first segment when I was talking about my journey with uh, cancer and my spiritual ascension. And I want everyone to to be able to realize that, that for me it was a self-realization that took place there. and. And I want to share that if anyone right now in the world would listen to this program who are going through cancer or loss of beloved one, who are grieving and mourning, they're in pain, and they feel like there's no help, there is help. I would say call upon you know, the Divine Mother. When I mean the Divine Mother is whatever manifestation is God, the Source, Allah, Brahma. doesn't matter what we call it, it's the same. And to go within themselves and to realize that it's part of a spiritual awakening because we live in a very special time. As we all know, there's a huge paradigm shift of consciousness taking place on the planet. And sometimes that's the reason why we go through the some those journey. And it's such a beautiful blessing for me. I look at it, what an extraordinary blessing I was given to go through that, going so deep and so profound because within that darkness of the soul, this is where you see the light, the brightest light. And this is a great opportunity to awaken and self-realize and God-realize. And I would say to all of you, go deep in your heart. And if you are in that space where I was in the darkness of the soul, which was not the first time, by the way, I have gone through many other major darkness of the soul, but this one was a major one. But it, to go inside and to realize and see it, what a blessing, and feel grateful. This is time to go within and let the divine work through you and discover the true nature of the self and your true divinity. And for me, it's the goddess energy. And this is what I want to talk about now because it's all about the divine feminine energy that comes through my work. Not only when I write for yoga magazine or I write also for other magazine as a spiritual teacher, or if it's in my artwork, is the divine feminine energy permeates through everything, my, my breathing, my being, the light I bring, and that's what's needed on planet Earth. And that's what's happening right now, that paradigm shift of consciousness, we need to awaken to this beautiful divine feminine energy throughout centuries has been dominated by the male masculine uh, energy. And we could see it in, not that it's not, it's wrong or bad, there is no label. It's just, it needs to be a union of the two and a balance. The true marriage of the soul is within the masculine and the feminine, feminine principal energy. And right now on the planet, since Paleolithic, uh, no, not Paleolithic, Neolithic, Neolithic time and the pagan time, much more advanced, I would say, later on in time, you would see different culture where it was a matriarch, uh, mat matriarch, matriarchal, matriarchal, thank you, a matriarchal society where the divine feminine energy was worshipped in the art of, of art. 
And you would see it in so many examples, like uh, the goddess of Lasso that dates from uh, 30,000 BC, 25,000 BC. It's a perfect example of those society that existed, worshiping the divine feminine energy. And in those days, I mean, even all the way throughout, maybe before the Middle Ages, you would see a lot of matri matriarchal society where people will live very much in peace and there was not a lot of chaos and conflicts. And uh, there was embodiment of a lot of those feminine divine energy qualities that uh, if we look at it on a physical point of view, how it's expressed within the self, either a male or a female, because it doesn't matter. This energy is not a gender bias. It has nothing to do with the gender, because that's the problem also with this energy. A lot of people think, and it could be also homophobic for men, Men need that energy so badly. That's why their soul is crying out because they're so out of balance. And that's why we have so many wars. And the, the quality that I'm talking about when it's expressed is the nurturing, the caring, uh, the creativity, the intuition, and the divine love that comes through the, the caring. All of those uh, even... Um, Let's see if I miss a quality. I think I said intuitiveness. So when we tap into that divine feminine energy and we let it express with the masculine, no, when I, when I refer to that, it needs to take place within the self, that marriage, the divine marriage. That is the true marriage. Transcendentate that. And then it's like Shiva and Shakti. Shiva Shakti is the same thing. It's the polarization. You see that in nature. This is the force that, that dominates all nature. And right now, throughout centuries, we have been so out of balance, and the expression is being shown right now, right now collectively in the world, what we see so much chaos. You, I don't know, we don't need to talk about that. We all know what is the chaos. So we need to bring back all that divine feminine energy within ourselves. And within that, that's why animal is such an important thing. Because the animal kingdom have been suffering so much. And now I'm going to focus only on one area because this is, we could sit down here for a week just to talk about on the subject. I like to talk about the millions of cats who are homeless abandoned around the world, billions, actually, if we look at it around the, the planet. I don't know, I'm assuming, but I know statistics. There are a lot of them. Yes, there are. But Whether it's millions with an M or billions with a B, well, there are a lot of them. There is, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's I know for sure millions, because I know the statistics are millions, but and I'm talking about feral cats. And look at Ali Cat Ally. They have done such an amazing work. They're the leader in helping those animals. They're such pressure animals. And that's what it's part of the expansion of consciousness is to realize that there's only one teacher and there's only one being. And is I always say that my guru is the whole universe. And I see myself in everything, in every being. And that's the realization that we need to bring about, that feminine energy. And to see where the service need, is needed. It's not, you know, the thing in the spiritual community, a lot of people say, oh, spirituality is sitting down, meditating and all that. It's so much more. It's active. It's proactive. It's seeing what it's needed on the planet and to go out and take action. And what a better way to serve humanity in a form of seva, seva, selfless action, which is karma yoga, to go out and help. And for me, it's inevitable. Everywhere I go with Michael, and we travel around the world, and I always see those homeless cats, either stray cats, injured animals, and, and feral cats. When it comes to feral cats, there is this new thing right now. Well, new thing. I, actually, it has been around, I think, for 10 years. It's called trap, neuter, and release. And this is the, the solution to the problem of overpopulation of animal companions, feral cats. In this case, here is feral cats who have been around human beings for thousands of years. And they're uh, unsocialized cats. And 
So you trap them, it's done by rescue group, and rescue group could be anyone like you and I, spiritually awakened, and to go out and educate yourself via Alay Kat Alay, and everywhere you go, even here in Santa Barbara, I bet you have a lot of feral cats and where you find colonies and you sterilize them and therefore you bringing down the overpopulation you also uh, breaking uh, um overcoming also a lot of uh, mis you know bad behavior from cats when they're not sterilized and also you are helping those beautiful animals because even though they are feral and unsocialized they're the same cats than you and I we have at home and we have eight rescue cats at home and many we have brought back that we found from the street they were actually socialized cats and you could socialize actually a feral cat very young, uh, but normally they leave their life out in the wild. The idea is that you sterilize them. It's again, there's a process to go. It's too long to talk about that, but uh, one can be educated on that. And I have done that a lot also doing uh, trap and neuter and managing a colony, what you call a colony. And then you go feed them because when you have a colony like that, they are your cats. So you feed them, you take care of them, and they live their life. And it's very beautiful. What a beautiful way of solving overpopulation of cats. The same thing with dogs. And one major thing I would like to stress, most people are not aware. All the cats, stray or ferals, who goes into most shelter, I would say 99.5% of shelters and pounds, they're killed. And that's what the movement is, a non-kill movement, ahimsa, non-violence, again, part of the yoga tradition of non-killing that Ali Kadalai works very much in stopping the violence because it's, it's not right to kill millions of cats. They have a right to leave too. They have a right to have that manifestation of that body they were giving in an animal and be a cat, you know? And so, unfortunately, that's what's happening with the animal kingdom when it comes to animal companion and dogs too, you know? You see a lot of homeless dogs all around. So I would say for all of us, as we awaken, expand our consciousness is to be proactive and not to forget the animal kingdom, how much they are suffering. And when we're being given the opportunity to serve, it's so much part of our spiritual awakening. And also I always say the animals are our spiritual teacher because the Divine Mother makes that happen for us to learn the interaction, the dynamics goes with people, people learn, they, they bloom within that process. It's a process, it's a spiritual process. And and the animal teach us, and they're so much full of love. We, uh, we actually, I want to tell you a very brief story. Um, when we were in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta, we rescued two uh, kitty cats. They were about a year old. They were not feral, they were socialized. They had been abandoned. And one of them was at our hotel, and I found out towards the end of our vacation, she was there. She was magnificent. And, this concierge told me, and I went at one o'clock in the morning, and I said, I will call her. I bet you she's starving, and she was hiding in the bushes. And I called her, and I will never forget, it was full moon, and my husband was already in the bedroom, and, and I went to feed her. I didn't even know who she was. I just called her, just from my timbre of my voice, my love, the love that she could feel, she came out. Oh, my God beautiful. She had the blue eyes. She was so beautiful. But she was shy, I could tell, and she was a little afraid. She went back into the bushes. So I went back. and But within the bushes, the, the moon light was coming through. And she crawled there, and she had a big belly. And I thought she was pregnant. And the moonlight was reflecting into her eye. And I sat down there, and I started rubbing her belly. And out of a sudden, I was out of my of my body temple, and I was one with her. I went into full bliss. I felt like a shakti bat coming into my, you know, a shakti bat is a transmission of divine consciousness, mm -hmm. and and I was looking at the light in her eyes, and within that reflection, I lost myself. It was so beautiful, and I stayed there, and I was just like this. 
just so very, 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 very amazingly blissful. And that's what people don't realize also, the animal is like, we, there is only one being, so it doesn't matter. It was so powerful. And then I brought her back, up, actually I didn't bring her back, I went back to the room and I told Michael, I said, I want to bring her home. I, I was trying to uh, convey to him my, my experience I had with her because it was a divine spiritual experience. I said, I have to bring her back home. And he didn't want to, and I went back in bed, and I couldn't fall asleep. I had to go back. Something was telling me I had to go and get her. I went against his will. I went to get her, brought her, <laughs> brought her back in our room, and then we brought the other one, Pooja, and then we brought her on the plane, to make a long story short, and she was having a hard time breathing. This little one that I had the spiritual experience with, she was really having a hard time. So it was really bad, it was getting worse and worse, and I had a feeling that she was healed, even though we had brought her to the veterinary, and uh, we brought her to the emergency hospital, and we find out we had to put her down, and it was the- Michael was right again, no, <laughs> that Michael. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he was right, no, but, but we find out that she, her lungs were infested with worms. All, they had eaten all her lungs, and I had to make the decision if I was going to let her go, and I ask, I pray, and I ask, and I had to let her go. And I had very few moments with her, but what she gave me was, was precious. It was very precious, and we let her go. I named her Isha. Isha means of God. It's very beautiful. So yeah. we only have maybe a couple of minutes left. Why don't you... I mean, I, you've told people a lot of what you wanted people to know about you and your life and your journey and what's possible and what's beautiful. But if you want to, like, finish things out just in 30 seconds, what Isn't do you want? Isn't he have wonderful? He's giving me that opportunity. Well, I'm asking everyone to really open and expand their heart to the animal kingdom and to do everything we can do for planet Earth to heal this planet and, and allow the divine feminine energy to come and merge with the masculine energy and to have this beautiful union and marriage. And, and I want to, to say, may, the whole, may all Satan beings find peace and love and well-being and joy and awakening and self-realization. And may we be all released from from suffering and pain. Amen. Shanti, Shanti, Amen. Amen, sister. So if anybody wants any information about Devi, the Art Project, Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. Mm -hmm.